question we are often asked is uh, how to determine the state of charge using the standard uh, smart daily BMS with a Bluetooth dongle. Hi folks, I'm Roger from Off Grid Van Life and in this episode we are going to be looking at uh, how you can determine the state of charge just using uh, the daily BMS, the smart BMS with a Bluetooth dongle and just uh, talk a little bit around uh, state of charge and, and um, answer some of the, the most common questions we get asked around these daily BMSs. Right, let's jump into it. In most of our vans, our personal vans and, and a lot of the builds that we've done, uh, we've installed um, either the uh, Vectron Smart Shunt or we've installed uh, one of these other Smart Shunts. This is a Juntec and uh, there are some other Juntec models. We've looked at a lot of other shunts and um, not found any that come close to either the Victron or the Juntec. But uh, I reached out to Daly at one stage and I said, uh, we've installed these things, but wouldn't it be great if the BMS could do proper Coulomb counting, so nothing to do with voltages and all that, so proper Coulomb counting to determine the true accurate state of charge. So Daly came back to me after I had uh, posed that, that question, and they, their reply wasn't exactly explicit, but basically they were saying, uh, we don't understand why you're asking us to implement something that is already there. So apparently, these BMSs uh, are Coulomb counters. They determine the state of charge by the Coulomb counting, not by uh, any sort of voltage or anything like that. And apparently, <clears throat> the way it works is that when you first attach the uh, BMS to your battery pack and turn it on, it, it generally uh, it says that your batteries are 50% 50, 50 state of charge and um, that's the default. And then when you charge them up fully and they finally reach the uh, the, the high voltage cutoff and uh, the, the BMS no longer allows charge to flow through to the cells, uh, then the BMS basically resets itself internally and says, okay, these cells are now 100% state of charge. So from there on, it knows the state of charge. You see, when the cells first arrive, the BMS doesn't know the state of charge. In fact, the BMS doesn't know the capacity uh, and it doesn't know the state of charge. It, it does know the voltage, and it will know when it is when they are fully fully charged it will know that they are you know what voltage they are so let's look at the daily app a little bit here so this is the daily app you'll see it uh, inset in the screen uh, it's a new version of the app um, it's basically showing that we can choose a single cell parallel or series so this is something new in it and um, i have already linked to this bluetooth id so let's go straight to that as you can see in this app, these, these are cheap, horrible cheap cells, by the way. Um, really not good quality at all. They were the ones that were sold as 420 amp hours when they're actually 240 amp hours. Um, and we've charged them fully, so the battery is running at 13.3 volts at the moment. And the BMS uh, rightfully says that they are 100% state of charge. Now. After I uh, had communicated with Daly, I went on a trip and I compared uh, the Daly app or the Daly BMS, what it was telling me, uh, with a Victron Smart Shunt and a um, Gentec Smart Shunt, all, all three in the same, on the same setup. And I was surprised that the Daly BMS was recording, well, was reporting a, a very similar state of charge to the other two. And uh, so I was quite happy that uh, it is doing what Daly said. But that doesn't address the questions that we often get asked, which is why uh, when my battery is fully charged, it's still only saying it's 70 or 80 percent or whatever. So I just want to talk about the voltage a little bit. Now, as you can see in the app, if we go to preferences, so I'm hitting preferences in the bottom right here. Um, if we then look at what we have set up for this particular battery here, we've set up cell volt high protected 3.60 volts. So that means the battery voltage will obviously be 14.4. It shows us here on the sum volt high protect 14.4. So th that's quite a safe, it's a good setting to have 14.4 volts. But the point I, I want to stress is if you're 
battery is never charging to 100%. So let's say you've bought uh, you know, a bunch of cells, you bought a daily BMS from us or whoever, and you can't get it to show 100% state of charge when they are fully charged. If, if your charger is, let's say, for example, putting out 13.8 volts and not the 14.4 that we expect to see here, then your battery will never report a 100% state of charge. It simply can't because you never put enough um, voltage into the battery to reach 100% state of charge. So it is quite important that your BMS setup is the same as your charger. Um, you, could, you could have it less. So, so for example, you could say to your charger, I want you to go to 14.6 and your BMS you've set at 14.4. So that's 3.6 volts per cell, obviously. And what would happen there is that the charger would pump up increasing voltage until the BMS itself would uh, say, right, all my cells have reached saturation. I've reached, the first cell has reached uh, 3.6 volts. And so I'm going to stop the charge. And the, and the charger would simply not be charging anymore because it's as if the battery is disconnected. So that's quite safe, but the other way around where you've set your battery as being a 14.4 volt battery in this particular case, if your charger is not putting 14.4 in, then uh, in theory the, the cells will never reach that 3.60 volts to actually cut off. And so from the BMS perspective, it will never reach 100%. So it'll, it will never be 100% state of charge. And that's when people generally get hold of us and ask, you know, what's the problem with this BMS? Because it's fully charged and it's still not reporting 100% uh, state of charge. So it's important that your uh, BMS settings are uh, synchronized or that you actually set them up uh, correctly to work with your charger. Now, if I just make a few points around the default values. And interestingly, we have reached out to Dali and we've said to them, there are three default values on your smart BMS that we disagree with. We just can't see how you guys can have these settings. Please, would you consider changing these defaults? And the answer has been absolutely no, we will not change them. So I'd really welcome your, your comments on this and tell me if I'm crazy or if I'm right. The first is this uh, one at the top, the, uh, the cell vault high protect. Daly set that at 3.70 volts, which means that they expect the, uh, the battery to be a 14.8 volt battery. So firstly, you're gonna reduce not by a huge amount, but you are going to reduce the life of your battery if that's what you charge it to. Secondly, most chargers don't get to 14.8 volts, they get to 14.6 uh, or less. Some of them you can get to 14.8, but it's not a very common setting on, on these chargers. So first setting, why don't Dali just set it at 3.65 volts? I, I have no idea because 13.65 volts is a 14.6 volt battery, which is generally what everybody sets their charges to. So it would make sense if Daly set that, but they don't. Okay. Second setting is the cell volt low protect. They set that at 2.2 volts. If, and we think, and, and again, I value your opinion on this. If we think that if you're going to discharge to 2.2 volts per cell, you are going to damage the cells, especially if you leave them in that state for a while before you charge them back up again. It's simply too low. We set ours to 2.5 and we recommend that you set it to 2.5 or higher. And what will happen is, let's say you're discharging, let's say you have an inverter uh, running a coffee machine or an oven or something like that and you're, <clears throat> you're drawing off the battery and basically you get to the first cell reaches 2.5 volts. Now the others will be a bit higher than that, but the first one reaches 2.5. The BMS then cuts the discharge to protect the cells. And what happens is that after a very short space of time, the cells bounce back. Literally within seconds, they start bouncing back up again um, from the 2.5 that you have set to, you know, usually closer to three volts uh, so that your battery finally comes to about 12-ish volts um, after you've cut the discharge. So second, second default of, of daily is we think that the 2.2 for the uh, low voltage protect is too low. It should be 
2.5 or higher. So that's the second one. The third one, if I spin right over here to temperature protection, the charge low temp protect, the daily standard on that is, is minus 40. Really? Daily, can you charge these cells at minus 40 degrees centigrade? Everybody knows you will destroy them. Okay, we can debate the first two voltage issues, but the allowing charge at minus 40 degrees centigrade, you cannot do that. You will damage the cells when you go below zero. In fact, at about two degrees centigrade, you're not meant to be charging them at their full charge rate that they're capable of. You, you can, that's why we set ours to five degrees, because at five degrees or higher, you can charge these at their full C rate. And you should never put any charge into the cell below zero. When, when these cells are at freezing point, they cannot accept charge. They should not accept charge or you will damage them. So how on earth do daily allow minus 40 on this default setting and they just tell us no ways, we're not changing that. Come on daily, get with it. You should, you should change that actually. So those are the three that they really should change. Um, a, a fourth one that we usually change or recommend would be changed would be uh, the rated capacity but obviously Delhi can never guess what you're going to attach your battery to so they have some I think it's 280 on a 300 amp hour, uh, 300 amp uh, BMS and it's about I think it's 50 or 100 or something on a on a 100 amp uh, BMS so that's fine I don't really care what those are because you'd have to change that anyway but uh, if I could wrap that up then, you can use the daily BMS with, the, with uh, the smart BMS with the Bluetooth connectivity to determine general state of charge of your batteries once you have synchronized your charger with the right voltage with your battery setup, with your, your BMS setup. It will, for the most part, uh, give you decent information uh, around the state of charge of the battery. Having said all of that, <laughs> Uh, what I found was that in sort of, I call it 80% of the, the time, um, these two were agreeing and this was agreeing with them. And then for some strange reason, this just goes off. And it's not by a huge amount. So if it is critical, and here's closing, my closing statement. If it is critical for you to know exactly what your state of charge is of the battery, you can't rely on the daily BMS. Uh, to tell it to you because in my experience it's flaky, it does strange things sometimes so it works 80% of the time and 20% of the time not. Uh, whereas my observation has been these shunts have worked uh, you know properly 100% that you know 100 of the time they are working properly telling you decent information and uh, I would still recommend if knowing your full your state of charge is critical to you uh, implement a shunt. If you just want some sort of indication and you don't really mind, then simply using the, the daily BMS is fine. Uh, knowing that sometimes it will give you some interesting results and you don't really care as long as the uh, protection kicks in when you're charging or discharging. So thanks folks and see you in the next episode.